usually what I do, what I would do, I, I tried it on a couple of like project, little projects already. And the way that I did to do the voiceover, basically, since I usually have a separate audio version, I actually create a compound clip of these. And then I'll just rename these a, just whatever the name of the video three is. So what I did was I have this compound clip because if you want to add color or change anything later on, uh, that's easier that way. And then what I would do, I will go to the media section here and then try to transcribe audio. Now that will take, depending on your clip, right? It will take a little bit. So what I'm going to do is actually, I'm going to cut this video using both the transcription method. And then I'm going to just go over and using the wave, I, I will call it wave uh, length or wave format version, which is just normal, like scrolling through the timeline and then checking the video and, and then see how long it takes with each of those. Right. What I do is actually just select it and select a section. And then I have the shortcut set, uh, set to F9 and that will basically insert it wherever your timeline marker is. So it will insert your selection right there. You can use these two which is insert and we'll do the same or you can do like a pen which basically puts it i think right at the end of the clip the last clip of your timeline i think so this could that could work if you don't have anything else like later on here right so yeah so let's continue all right so here we have both of the cuts of the same video it's less than a minute long video and the recording was actually it was like four minutes of recording right so to shorten it down and take out the cuts and all that stuff. Now, the important thing is how long it took each of those workflows or methods, right? And the thing is that what I did was I actually just used the transcription cut first. And that took me a little bit over 10 minutes. I have the picture right here. I just can't remember exactly what. Now, there using the normal method, which I usually do, which would make sense. It will be faster because I'm already used to that format took me six minutes and 30 ish seconds. So yeah, there's a three and a half minute difference and it's a big difference. And that is just a one minute clip. Now, if you have longer video, that could probably be a lot different, right? But then it, I, I, I think that it really depends on the workflow. And once you get used to it, you just become more efficient on things, right? One thing I don't like is that after you have selected that section, it doesn't actually play that section. It just plays afterwards, right? So you have to go back and then see that section there. And the thing is that I have to like go and play back a couple of times, right? And the way that I usually do it on my timeline, let's say is like, all right, I already see a these waveforms are similar. So if I don't like one or if I remember when I recorded that there was something that was uh, that I made a mistake or something, I actually just skip that and I can just I can just jump faster using the waveform, right? But then here I actually have to like find the actual correct version here and I have to like play access to the magic mask and have a recording with the green screen video. You see, I made a mistake there or like a pause or whatever. And I have to just check the second one there and then I have to like go and actually find the text. Now, this might be a matter of workflow. It, it might work better for you because you might like better to like find the text right there. Right. Okay. So like one thing, for example, here is that it missed one word, which is pretty common on any text, uh, like speech to text, uh, AI processing, I guess you could call it. There's none of them is perfect. Like now, what are my thoughts on what could be improved here? I think one of the main issues here is just the polishing of, uh, you can see the text right here, obviously, but then sometimes the text where it says now it might just be selecting when you insert it into your timeline, it might just be inserting O W and the end stays out. Right. So you have to go back and fix that. And that's really a time consuming. I think that's what added maybe a minute extra of like me having to go back and re review all of it and basically just move around everything again so that those missing words were actually being seen on the clip. Right. Cause otherwise it would just be a bunch of cut audio. Now, is it good? I think it is. It's pretty good. Like, I think overall, I didn't find that many mistakes. But if you were editing a podcast, for example, or like clips from a podcast where there's a lot more people talking one over the other, if you don't have a separate audio channel for each person, then that can be, become really difficult. So 
and the actual speech detect de de and the actual speech detector might actually have a hard time actually identifying the words when they are all mixed up right so what are some of my thoughts of things that could be improved just a little quick interruption i just wanted to let you know that the split screens toolkit has been pretty popular lately on our swally store so if you want to check them out and get 66 split screens for your videos make sure to check this out but if you're not sure and you want to try them out there's the first set which contains 11 split screens that you can download for free right here on the swally store i think the ui is pretty good that you can just have a like a like a flying box i guess you could call it i don't know what you call this and then just move it like that and that's just a matter of personal preference right uh some people might like these to have fixed but i guess people just set it up on the same screen or if you have a second screen i can just drag it out of my screen right and have that on the second screen now i think the format in which it's written right now the speech detector could definitely be improved why do i say these um I think that right here it just looks like a notepad if you open a word document on a notepad on like the notepad on windows uh it would just look like this so it doesn't have any formatting right and i think the formatting does help it sometimes does help sometimes to identify where things are happening so i think my ideas would be like if the speech generator is able to detect the pauses that are long enough for when you're doing like a retake for example have these basically put the input the text on a different line already and have some sort of marker there that indicates that there was a pause here that will definitely make it a ton easier for the editor or someone's editing to view where there was a cut or like another speech started rather than just here like we have here it the paragraphs just they just change basically whenever they want right there's a new paragraph that it doesn't feel like it actually detects when there's a new idea or a new like pause or recording right but that will definitely come with time and probably be after it's polished enough now the other issue i guess you could call it difficulty maybe was that when words were just like cut in half like you can see the selection right here right but uh when you input into your timeline when you add it to your timeline there's like the little cuts. I guess those were the main two things. Just the UI in here that probably could be improved. Basically giving it a bit more formatting so that when an editor that's, when somebody wants to edit it, viewing the text, then it's easy to identify different sections of the text, right? Similar to like, I guess the concept would be similar to what I do with the waveforms. Like if you can see a bunch of similar waveforms, you already know and remember maybe how many takes you, you took. But if you can see this waveforms, you can already more quickly jump and make the cuts to the waveforms until you find, I guess, the correct version of your recording that you wanted to, to use, right? And so my final thoughts, is it good? It's pretty good. It's It detects most, I guess it detects almost 99% of the words, probably. I didn't use any weird words in here, but like here, for example, go to the mat, bold, notice Republicans section. <laughs> Yeah, that doesn't make sense, right? But it was the mad finesse. But I guess the voice speech trainer has to like learn how to identify what each person sounds like or something like that. But overall, I think, <laughs> yeah, I'm just noticing that right now. But I think, yeah, overall, I think it's good. I think it would become better and it's still in beta version, so it will become better. As I mentioned, I used this script on a, on, a, on a project for a while because it was like collaborative project and uh, the process was similar the first time i used it it was a bit of a mess and they still had like updates like every week or two weeks but like over time it definitely did improve and it was detecting a lot of the speech pretty accurately but then there were still words missing so you always have to go back and correct it so if you want to use like subtitles or something like that then you will have to go over and check the words again there's no like a perfect speech to text the text or yet i guess that i know of so should you update to studio just because of this feature that's a good question i guess so if you enjoy text-based editing i guess you could you should there's all these subtitles that add a ton of uh they do save a ton of time when you're just doing that and that will probably be also improved upon so i would say yeah if you are working for client projects and making money uh, making either social media videos or any type of video basically it's definitely a good call plus you're supporting the people that are working on hard that are working really hard to just make this better 
that is it for this video and that was just my experience of working with the transcription in the DaVinci Resolve 18.5 beta number 2.